The Warsaw Airport standoff continues to draw many questions. The presidency yet to explain why the South African delegation accompanying, the, uh, accompanying him, I should say, on that African peace mission to Russia and Ukraine was detained, effectively detained in Poland. At the same time, the Democratic Alliance wanting a full account on the cost of the trip and a breakdown of the president's security detail. Well, the ANC's International Relations Subcommittee Deputy Chairperson, Obed Bapela, joining us now to give us at least what they know from their end as the governing party. Mr. Bapela, let me thank you very much for your time. Let's kick off the conversation with um, the party's overall assessment of the AU peace mission to Russia and Ukraine. What's the ANC's view? Thank you very much, Pauli, and to the viewers of uh, Newsroom Africa and all South Africans who are watching. We are, as African National Congress, very much uh, welcoming the initiative, obviously initiated by President uh, Ramaphosa, President of South Africa, engaging with other African leaders that had taken the initiative to go and broker peace uh, in Russia and Ukraine. Yes, uh, the trip obviously, uh, one will say, was very, very successful. Just to start and initiate when everybody is just watching and not doing anything about that. And whereas others are busy pouring in weapons in that particular area and finances. And, uh, and I know that we were accused, obviously, of taking sides and we have been explaining it that as South Africa, we are not taking sides. So the African National Congress really is happy about this particular process. It goes with the ANC resolution in the National Executive Committee in April when we said, from just talking and taking a stand is not enough. Yeah. Let's go out there and send peace missions. And the president has taken that uh, initiative uh, with African leaders as, as is the case. The ANC will also be engaging its fraternal parties, friends all over the world, to go and explain our non-aligned uh, stance, but uh, accompanied by obviously going there to explain why we took that position and why this peace initiative is so important, because it's the beginning of all things to come. Hoping, therefore, that the reception that uh, the president and the delegation received yeah. uh, will then go forward in terms of matters being considered as tabled on the tables to both the president of Ukraine and the president of Russia federal. And we hope, therefore, that uh, we will then be punching our weight into that particular issue. I know China has come in with 12 points, but Africa says 10 points, and, uh, and, 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 and Brazil has been talking about five points. All these points will culminate into some process where we hope there will be cessation of hostilities, uh, or ceasefire or de-escalation on, on the matters of the war so that talks can then begin to to start to end the war, mm. which is affecting also Africa, as already explained. Yeah. Mr. Bapella, you've made a number of uh, points absolutely key, but perhaps here's one that I would like your thoughts on. The president, yes, you mentioned on the one hand the, the element about uh, being seen as not being an honest broker, as in his government, given the accusations that we may have given Russia weapons. But over and above that, the president has been on the ground in Ukraine. He has seen the devastation there. He has been to Russia. He has sat across the table, President Putin, and he has mentioned a war that is ongoing as opposed to what Russia has referred to as a special operation. He has mentioned the children who have been affected by this war, who need to go back to their home country. I suppose he wasn't really specific uh, as in accusing Russia, but we know that this is the subtext. The very reason that President Putin has an arrest warrant has to do with children allegedly abducted from Ukraine and taken to Russia. With all of these elements, Mr. Babella, is the governing party still certain and unwavering in its stance that President Putin should come to South Africa, come that BRICS summit in August? 
Well, it's a very difficult matter, as you put it, and uh, we we have we are signatories to the ICC and the Rome Statute, the way it's domesticated in South Africa, uh, gives an obligation on us to, to arrest uh, South Africa. But the possibilities or the doables of arresting uh, becomes very, very impossible uh, for South Africa because when President Putin travels, uh, he travels with a very big entourage. Uh, and, 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 and the bodyguards around him it's not easy to penetrate and go and arrest an individual who's got 3,000, almost two platoons or three platoons uh, or company uh, in the military language uh, that you have to go through. Mm. And that in itself will be a provocation, uh, any arrest of, of Putin by anybody, not only South Africa. And, and, and also, here is a situation where two countries are uh, in a war, and, uh, and, and, and then you want peace, but you arrest the one and, uh, and then say, I'm arresting you, but I want you to end the war. You are definitely going to be seen as having escalated the war instead of de-escalating. So that matter, we leave to the government in terms of the invitations that it has issued. And, uh, and then we are still waiting for the responses, obviously, from the countries that are BRICS members. Uh, in particular, because BRICS does not belong to South Africa. We just happen to be a member and we are the host this year. Uh, BRICS is an organization of five countries with others wanting to join. So it's a multilateral body that uh, whatever are the issues, the president will engage yeah. uh, or the minister of foreign affairs will engage with those countries around the difficulties that South Africa finds itself in and uh, whether you can say to them, don't attend or attend, it's a matter that will leave to those options that are still on the table being explored. Yeah. Talking about, in fact, I want to use the example you've just used of um, President Putin traveling with a, a massive entourage of security personnel. Our own security personnel, including journalists, were grounded in Ukraine. In fact, the strongest view is that they were effectively detained by the Polish authorities whilst they were trying to make their way to Ukraine and Russia. So that trip could not happen. The ANC's honest analysis of what occurred in Poland. Well, there seems to be an anti-South Africa sentiment uh, in Poland that we might have underestimated and I think the exposure by this trip has now given us reasons as to why Poland is treating South Africa the way it does. And I think the issues of the accusations that are there, not tested yet, uh, and hoping that the commission that the, the president has set up to investigate whether indeed any arms did go into Lady R, it could have created those particular tensions where Poland obviously is a staunch member and a supporter of Ukraine, uh, on one side, and, and the NATO forces uh, obviously are grounded in that particular country. Mm -hmm. So this perception of South Africa having taken sides is it's strong and we should not be underestimating it. And I think going out there to go and explain ourselves now becomes more urgent and necessary mm -hmm. for South Africa and the African National Congress on one side to go to its allies and friends, even within Poland, to go and explain because we do have friends and comrades who are members of the Socialist International in Poland to go and really explain our case so that we could then be understood uh, and, then, and then where there are questions to answer for those questions. And that includes, obviously, the next uh, activities by the President to also reach out to the United Nations in terms of the mediation that needs to go to that situation after brokering and also to the United States uh, once more to send more and more emissaries and admissions mm. uh, to go and explain our case across the society of, of the U.S. so that any doubts that are there, we can then dispel them. But hoping the commission will also come out clearly and say uh, nothing of that sort happened so that we are not punished for something that we do not do. Yeah. Uh, and I think those sensitivities ought to be taken on board and ensure that the world is satisfied that South Africa is not taking any sides. Our stand 
eh, remains our stand. Our soldiers are not in Russia, no. There are no soldiers that were sent there. No weapons were sent there. We didn't have the capacity even to, to supply Russia with weapons. Uh, looking at the state of affairs of one of the Dinel, uh, I mean, companies of the state, Dinel, which is the producer of the arms to the South African National Defense Force. Mm. The state of organization was in disrepair and is only now recovering in March this year, 2023. Uh, three, and yeah. uh, they were not in production for two years. I don't know what they would have sold or loaded uh, in that particular ship. Okay. If we could just park on the one side, Mr. Bapela, and I take on board what you are saying, that perhaps South Africa may have been viewed with suspicion by Poland, given the accusations that were made by the U.S. about alleged weapons being placed on the Lady R. But, but here's the other subtext here. The head of the president's uh, security personnel, Wally Rode, is very clear that what they faced in Russia was racism. Uh, that, in Poland. In Poland, sorry, in Poland. And that then also is corroborated by our own journalist who was on this plane, Govin Wittles, who says, what we saw there, what we experienced there, was raw and naked racism. These are his words. Do you think that as some people suggest, that the matter of Yanush Valush, the murderer of SACP leader Chris Hani, may have played a hand in the general attitude of the Polish towards South Africa. Do you think that these claims of racism were in part motivated by that? Well, uh, let, let's take just a step back even beyond the Walush, uh, Walush uh, issue. When the war broke up in Ukraine, uh, between Ukraine and Russia, a lot of Africans were unfortunately ill-treated. Yeah. Uh, as they were running away, they were blocked and stopped, and, and whereas other nationalities had access of running away from the war, uh, and Africans were destituted, were not even assisted and helped. An element of racism is quite big in, 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 in Poland. And I think I can just say it taken from those pictures and, and what the students were seeing across all nations of Africa. It was not just South African students who were trapped there. And, 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 and then obviously the issue of one news could also be another matter uh, where they were already doing welcoming rallies for one news to come. Uh, as, uh, if, if, and they thought that after the release from prison, uh, he will be on a plane going to, to, to Poland. And that welcoming uh, ceremonies that were organized is quite worrying that somebody who had killed a leader of our revolution, Chris Hani, in South Africa, they do not have sensitivities about that. And they were just going to welcome him as a hero in that particular area. So it could be an added element, but the core. It's a racism, uh, 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 which is a big issue in, in Poland. And, uh, and then I think that is a matter that is worrying that racism is rearing its ugly head across certain nations in a manner that it is being demonstrated by the Polish. ANC's International Relations Deputy Chairperson, Robert Bapela, let me thank you very much for your time and indeed your analysis of this situation.